Dear sir, in this video presentation, we shall discuss about surge test in motor windings and coils. This test is also known as surge compression test and impulse test. Before the starting the detailed discussion about this surge test of windings and alone coils of the different types of motor and transformer, we shall want to talk about some fundamental electrical properties of coil or winding which are considered in motor transformer winding testing and making. So, if we asked a question that what is the coil, which is called in Hindi as Kundal, Kundli or Taro Ka Lachha, answer is coil is defined as bunch of conducting wires which are looped in different types of shape, size, length and number of turns depending upon the applications. Now, if we talk about fundamental electrical properties which are be pre-considered in electrical machine designs, therefore, the first electrical property is resistance of the coil or windings. And this resistance is depends upon the material of the conductor and physical dimensions temperature of conductors. Material of conductor are generally electrolytic copper and electrolytic aluminium and the value of resistance is measured in ohm and its magnitude about 1 to 30 milli ohm typically and depends upon the machine ratings. And another electrical properties of the coil is insulation of the conductor or whole coil. Insulation of conductor or coils is nothing but a layer or layers of insulating material which are wrapped into uh, outer surface of conductor or coils which provides non-conductness among conductors and other medium while looped or fit in stator rotor transformer cores. And very interesting thing is that the value of insulation is also measured in home by the measuring operation and its mag magnitude is generally in mega ohm. We shall be discussed in another video regarding the method of measurement of resistance of the coil and measuring operation. Therefore, here we shall talk about only the surge test and its related terms. So far, you have learned that what are the basic electrical properties of a coil. So, when we make or test a coil, we will have to work keeping these fundamental properties in mind. Now, now, we shall know what is the surge test. First of all, we shall know why we actually do surge test and uh, which parameters are checked during this test. If I say in very simple language that why do surge test, then I would say that testing the electrical shortness among conductors of coil and coil surroundings. And uh, why and how electrical shortness comes between conductors and coil surroundings? My direct answer is that where there is shortness, there has been insulation damaged. Let's understand this thing from the drawing of the coil. Suppose it is the coil of the traction motor and this is the isometric view of this coil and this is the cross section of coil limbs. As you see, there are two flat rectangle conductor uh, which are looped with nine turns like this and spread like this and uh, all limbs of this coil are wrapped with different type of insulating tape finally. When it was made by looping, spreading, taping operation or due to some reason the insulation of this place got damaged. Now, as I told that due to some reason there is the insulation damaged here, let's consider these two pens as flat conductor. So there is the insulation damage here and uh, this flat conductors have own insulation layer uh, approx 0.23 mm kapton. This is the same kapton layer where insulation is damaged which uh, we are talking meaning electrical sorting has happened when the is insulation is damaged now how will we know that the conductor in this coil are electrically sort that too without opening the outer tape and separating the flat conductors of coil this is a really big challenging task but with the help of the surge test it must be done so, what is actual basic principle of surge test and how does surge test work? In fact, the basic principle of surge test is based on the Matka test principle. 
when we buy an earthen pitcher we hear the sound by it knocking and uh, find out whether there is any crack in the pot similarly when we do a surge test we put electrical energy in the coil for very short time and then see the behavior of this energy in the form of wave the method of testing of coil in surge test machine is based on the principle of tank circuit that is based on lcr circuit means the surge test machine causes damped oscillation in coil and displays and records it on computer screen and database respectively therefore the basic electrical circuit diagram is like this and this is the coil equivalent circuit which to be tested and this coil have own inductance l resistance r and capacitance c and this is external capacitor ce and this is the diode and this is a hb setup with variac now if we talk about the working of the surge test circuit so when we apply sinusoidal alternating voltage in a single phase here then this high voltage setup with variac will provide voltage as required at this point in case of the traction motor coil the test voltage is approx 6 to 7 kV and the current is very low approx 20 milliamperes now if we plot a waveform for this output voltage the waveform will be like this here this is the peak voltage and this voltage will pass through this diode therefore this diode will be work as half wave rectifier to provide waveform like this that means the negative portion of the voltage will be eliminated now a question will arising in your mind why we need this type of positive waveform only because our target is the charging of this capacitor in non-polarized mode only that means this capacitor will break the supply after it's fully charged because capacitor does not conduct like voltage after it fully charged now this capacitor has been fully charged with peak voltage VF so it will have potential energy equal to half C VF square now we shall close this switch for microsecond for generation of impulse voltage to coil or in uh, in other words to allow this capacitor discharging through this coil or coil equivalent circuit now if we plot a voltage graph across here the graph will be something like this this is the voltage axis and this is the time axis and this portion of the graph is indicating discharging of the capacitor now a question will arising in your mind why this negative portion is coming because when capacitor is discharging then inductance of the coil will be generating the back emf or voltage according to the lenz law and this voltage will have negative value so this portion of the waveform is in a negative side we can say capacitor had fully charged uh, this time td or in other words this td time is switch closing time which was in microsecond now from time t naught the damping oscillation will be started like this because the coil have own inductance capacitance and resistance here coil have resistance r so energy supplied from the capacitor will disappear through it as joule heating i square rt that is why the magnitude of the voltage is continuously decreasing like this so it's called damped oscillation we shall bypass the detailed explanation that how the capacitor and inductors are worked and causes the oscillation in this video therefore the frequency of damped oscillation is denoted by f equal to 1 by 2 pi under root 1 by lc minus r divided by 2 l square that means frequency of this damped oscillation will depend upon the value of lc and r here we shall focus in resistance r if we analyze this frequency expression if r will be lower then frequency will high and vice versa that means 
If a conductor shorting is occurred in coil due to any reason, then the equivalent resistance of the coil will be decreased, so frequency will be increased. That means number of oscillation will become greater for a unit time. If we plot a graph with uh, different frequencies, then it will be look like uh, here this waveform for the frequency f1 and this uh, waveform for frequency f2 and f2 is less than f1. That means waveform with frequency f2 uh, will be shifted left side with respect to waveform f1. That means if frequency will be changed due to changing the value of R, C and L, waveform of the damped oscillation will be shifted accordingly. And when we shall do surge test of the windings, while uh, these are engaged in the motor, stator, rotor and transformer, the amplitude of the waveform, uh, this amplitude of the waveform will be also changed due to core permeability and reactance. So far, you know the basic working principle of surge test. Now we shall discuss uh, the procedure of the surge test for a coil and coils engaged in the stator, rotor and transformer. Before the discussion of surge test procedure, we shall want to discuss uh, that why surge test is important. If electrical sorting will be uh, occurred between the conductors of the coil or in between the windings and its surrounding then the resistance will be decreased so more current will be drawn from the source to coil that is why the current asymmetry will be occurred among different coil which is not for good for motor due to magnetic flux imbalance will be occurred which will be effect in the efficiency of the motor and transformer and due to shortness of the conductor temperature hot spot will be come which is also not good for the motor and transformer health so surge test plays major role in the manufacturing of motor and transformer and its and its quality improvement now we shall know the procedure of the surge test. When we test a coil, first we make a master sample waveform by choosing the ideal coil and save it on database. Then we shall compare the waveform which is generated from the test coil and we analyze the both waveform by superimposing each other and records percentage of the shifting as error. Similarly, we shall test the windings which are engaged in stator, rotors and transformer. I hope you will understand the surge test of the violin windings. Thank you very much. <laughs>